Something big coming up on your screen Just settle back and relax Cause you're gonna get A whole lot of singing A whole lot of laughing A whole lot of laughing from me tonight but i think i think genie is a little mad at me last night i told her i wanted to eat out and she left a sandwich on the lawn <laughs> i think she's mad because the, uh, the night before i went to a surprise party at phil harris's house it was a real surprise from phil too he didn't know he was there <laughs> everybody was at the party and such Beautiful women. Whew. Elizabeth Taylor was there. She sent a waiter over to ask me for a dance. And you know something? He wasn't a bad dancer for a waiter. <laughs> then I had a little trouble driving home. Some wise guy at the party must have filled my gas tank with vodka. And I couldn't get the car in any gear but high. <laughs> Something sweet love I wanna say President Johnson just announced he's going to make Jackie Gleason a national park. <laughs> See, and President Johnson had a news conference at his ranch down in Texas. Boy, he sure loves Texas, and you know, he's right. 
because I was thinking, if it wasn't for Texas, the Gulf of Mexico would leak all over Arizona. <laughs> sent to me from heaven. I've never loved anyone till I loved you, but I'm not really worthy of your love. You're a princess. Kiss me. The goddess of love, kiss me. can only say you're the dearest, most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Oh, mm. darling, remember, remember the first night we met? Where was that? That little sidewalk cafe with the wonderful violinist. He played our song all evening. Oh, how I'd love to hear it again right now. Just put the record on. Okay, the record. Hmm.
Then Reagan liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of a book called How to Fix a Flat. <laughs> uh, yes, I... Let me check that for you. I think we do right here in the automotive. Ah, yes. Here we are. How to Fix a Flat by Marvin Goodwrench. No, 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 no. I wanted How to Fix a Flat by Mr. Laddie. I see. <laughs> I see what you mean, a flat. Are you decorating an English apartment? <laughs> I see. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all, all right. right. Bye -bye. We're closing up now. Up. I, uh... Yes. I wonder if you have Hollywood Wives by Jackie Collins. Oh, ho, 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 ho. yes. That's a very spicy book. We have that right here. Hollywood Wives. Oh, ho. that's so sexy. We have to keep that in the spice rack. <laughs> here we are. Hollywood Wives by Jackie Collins. No, 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 no. I want it. Hollywood Wives by Jack Edward Collins. Oh. Jackie Collins. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No. no. It's all right. We don't have that. That's all right. Can you help me with David Copperfield? David Copperfield. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's Dickens. No. What? No, that's uh, Carter Wells. No, I think you'll find that Dickens wrote David Copperfield. No, no, no. Charles Dickens wrote David Copperfield <laughs> with two P's. <laughs> this is David Copperfield by Carter Wells with one P. No, I'm sorry. We, we, we don't have that. Would you mind looking through your David Copperfields and not your David Copperfields? <laughs> Copperfield. All our David Copperfields with two Ps are by Charles Dickens. Do you have a what? copy of what? What? Great Expectations? Yes, definitely. That's G-R-A-T-E, Expectations. Also by Carter Wells. Nothing by Carter Wells. <laughs> You have a copy of A Christmas Carol with a Q. <laughs> Nothing was quite a well. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so sorry to bother you. Not at all. Do you have Ocean Standard Book of American Birds. Yes. <laughs> O-L-S-E-N? Yes. B-I-R-D-S? Yes. The expedited version, of course. The what? 
the expurgated version of Olson's standard book of American birds. The ones without the, the wood finches. They all have wood finches. The wood finches of standard American birds. Well, I don't like them. Those nasty long beaks. You don't like the wood finch? No. I don't like blue jays. Blue jays! <laughs> and another one. Oh, here's another little one. All right. Anything else? Buy it. I can't. Why not? It's torn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you have to ask me? It's a bookstore. What do you want? Anything you want, it's a bookstore. Ask me. <laughs> Do you have Shasha Gabor's new book? Who's next? Or remember the alimony? Yes. Here it is. Now buy it. I don't have any money. It doesn't matter. I'll take a check. I don't have my checkbook. I'll buy it for you. Here. Here. Eleven dollars. Go ahead. Take it. Read. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Come on. Once upon a time, there were three Hungarian sisters, and each one was younger than the other one, and the youngest was the mother. You have a Twinkie. A Twinkie? Dean is a performer. Dean is not a singer. Dean is not a comedian. Dean is a performer. He can do everything. He can do everything. He's, uh, he's like Willie Mays. He can feel and he can hit with power. Dean can work films and be successful, which he did. He worked uh, theaters with Jerry. He worked nightclubs alone. His recordings go on and on forever. His television show is history, which is what we're here to talk about right now. Sinatra is the greatest singer that I've ever been around, bar none. No question. But Dean is a major performer. Dean can do everything. guy and he lives a quiet life and I mean a real quiet life yeah his idea of a good time is to sneak into the Hollywood Wax Museum and kiss Edna May Oliver good night <laughs> sincerely supper time and the liver is greasy <laughs> Our love affair is a wondrous thing Because my wife don't suspect the thing <laughs> Well, we're going to sing a song now I'm going to go to the couch Where's the rest of my leg? Oh. All righty. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Third floor, ladies' lingerie. All sizes. Small, medium, and bubble, bubble. Bu bu. I'm not too good. Wait a minute. Hold it. A lot of 
people are asking, <clears throat> excuse me, where, where are the new comedians coming from? Well, I don't know, but here's one who just came from his dressing room. <laughs> and he one very funny man, Mr. Flip Wilson. <laughs> Everyone has idols, right? People who inspire them and drive them on to new horizons. My idol, of all the giants of American history, my idol is Christopher Columbus. And it's not because he was Italian. I just like Columbus. I think that was a tremendous thing Columbus did, discovering America. I mean, when he was a kid, he had a big problem. Like, his parents were leaving there in the yard to play. And the neighbors would come by, they'd lean over the fence, they'd tease him. They'd say things like, Christopher Columbus, what are you going to do when you grow up? And he'd say, I'm going to discover America. <laughs> I told him, you better cut that out. You know there isn't any America. You know the world is square. Chris would say, they sure are. <laughs> 35, when he'd gotten out of grammar school, he arranged an audience with the queen, Queen Isabel, Isabel Johnson. <laughs> What's the queen's name? Don't she ask him about this America project? And Chris tells him, if I don't discover America, there won't be a Benjamin Franklin or a Star Spangled Banner, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and no Ray Charles. <laughs> the queen heard no Ray Charles, she panicked. The queen said, Ray Charles! You gonna find Ray Charles! Is he in America? Chris says, sure, that's where all those records come from. All the queens running through the halls of the castle screaming, Chris gonna find Ray Charles, honey. He's going to America on that boat. What you said, Chris, but I'm gonna find Ray Charles. She wrote him out a traveler's check. <laughs> Chris ran the local Army Navy store. He bought three used ships, two pair of fatigues, some shades. Then he got his other supplies. He got three chicken sandwiches, two cans of Vienna sausage, five cases of scotch, and a small soda. <laughs> Ready to leave. The photographers and reporters are at the pier to see him off. All the girls are there. They're all excited and screaming. Goodbye, Columbus. <laughs> he gone on that boat, honey. <laughs> he gone to America. <laughs> Isabel was there. She'd had a few. <laughs> Isabel saying, Chris gonna find Ray Charles. <laughs> Chris said, knock it off, Isabel. Will you be cool? Then he turned to the first mate. He said, Boy, anchor. About 10 minutes later, the guy said, 7,482 miles. <laughs> he said, Put the anchor in the boat. Okay? Let's put it in the boat. You guys don't even know how to weigh the anchor. When they'd gotten out of the harbor, the first mate asked, Chris, which way is America? Chris said, I don't know. He said, Oh, we're going to have to sail around or we bump into it. <laughs> We better go this way. If we go that way, we'll sail off the edge like them other guys. <laughs> hundred days later, the men are ready to mutiny. Chris has been goofing. He's been going through a bit like, Back up! Make a right! Watch out for the edge! The first mate says, Come here, Chris. Chris, the men are ready to mutiny. Cabin boy said, If you don't find America in two days, he's going to give you a shot in the mouth. Right then, a piece of wood floats by the ship. Chris said, there's a piece of wood. So we're not far from America. That's American wood. <laughs> said, I know American wood when I see it. First mate said, why don't you cut that out? That's a piece of the ship they're breaking up. <laughs> right then, the guy in the mast shells, land ho! Chris said, what does that mean? <laughs> So that means he sees land. Chris said, well, pull over. <laughs> so that's America. You guys are going to pass right by. You don't even know America. 
America when you see it. Said, that is America. Said, look at all those spacious skies. Those amber waves of green. Said, Dig that purple mountain's majesty. I bet there's fruit out there on the plane. Big holiday in America that day. Big holiday called not having been discovered yet day. All the Indians on the beach there celebrating. They got sandwiches, six packs, three or four bags of whatever it is they're putting in the pipe. Chris leans over the side of the ship. He says, hey, yo! Yo! Where is this? Fine little Indian broad standing on the beach said, Why? What's your name? Why you want to come around here and have ships? Said, My name's Christopher Columbus. I'm out discovering. So I'm going to discover America. I'm going to discover y'all. Little Indian broad said, We don't want to be discovered. <laughs> You can't discover nobody if they don't want to be discovered. You better discover yourself away from me. First mate said, Chris, they're hostile. Chris said, yeah, and they mad too. <laughs> said, but we're going in there anyway. It's America. They can't keep us out of there. Let down a longboat. And they let down the longboat. And they're heading into the shore. And the Indians are throwing rocks and spears and flaming arrows. And he yelled a lot of things about Chris's mother. <laughs> first mate said, first mate said, Chris, we better not go in there. Those Indians are crazy. Chris said, turn the boat around. We'll leave. We'll make a map and give it to the pilgrims. Pilgrims will fix them. As they turn the sail away, the little Indian girl says, Goodbye, Columbus, you devil, you. <laughs> yeah, fine. That's Mr. Cliff Wilson. You devil, you. Yeah, yeah. I just want you to know that you can come back on this show and make us laugh anytime you want. You know that? Thank you very much. It's all right. <laughs> hey, Gene. Yeah. There's an article in this magazine you might be interested in. It's yeah. by, yeah, by a lady from the Women's Liberation Movement. She says that men use dancing as an excuse to treat women as sex objects. Well, she may have a point there, Gene. I... I've seen the way some guys carry on when they're dancing, and, you know, they think they can do anything they like to a girl as uh, long as they do it in tempo, you know? <laughs> but, you know, this article says that women ought to refuse to dance with men from now on. Now, wouldn't that be terrible? Why? Men don't need women to dance with. We don't? No. We could dance with anything, we, even inanimate objects. Oh, you mean married women? <laughs> no! No, Dean! Plain, simple, everyday objects. Come over here, I'll show you. See, here we got a lot of things in here. Say, we're in luck, Dean. A lot of them seem to have come stag. You mean you're actually gonna dance with these things? Not without asking. <laughs> Hey, Jane, see if she's got a squeegee for me. No, it's married. How can you tell she's married? It has a ring around it. Got a ring around it. <laughs> Not bad dancing, 
answer. I just wish it would keep its trap shut. Oh, yeah. What's that? Well, when they're going to the powder room. Oh, why can't they ever go alone? <laughs> Set this one out. I bet you're glad to get out of the house. Make beautiful music together. You're too late. She's got a kid. <laughs> hey, it just dawned on me. What? No wonder you're so good at this. You've had a lot of experience dancing with inanimate objects. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Here, be my guest. who have been exposed to the talents of Jonathan Winters will agree that he is an unchallenged master of improvisation. We thought an old attic might be fun, so we'll turn him loose, and I guarantee you he'll turn you on. Can you make your way through here? Yeah. Many of you have asked, you know, on this tour, what the sacred bird is like. The cat ate it. Isn't that a shame? It used to be on here on this little perch. But as I told you, the cat ate it. That's the way Kitty goes. <laughs> On guard. So you're the Count de Fortfar. I'd recognize you anywhere. You know, it's a strange thing. But I intend to kill you. You've been the Count too long. 
Several years ago, I remember you as the Countess. <laughs> now you're back to being the Count. You're all fouled up. I shall have to kill you, because I am to be the rightful heir to the throne. Are you ready? Hmm? Don't take advantage of me. I'm nearsighted in the one eye. to make sure. <coughs> I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Jones. You come in here for a checkup, right? Well, you really let yourself go this time. now. <laughs> What's that? Listen to your heart. What are you talking about? <laughs> you listen to it. I'll play loud in case you won't say anything. But... <laughs> Three days out and I was sick down to my shoes And to make it more forlorn We sailed into a raging storm Hit a sandbar and got stuck right in the ooze Where were you when the ship hit the sand? <laughs> Wanted a folk song. Yeah. Go ahead. You got the whole family in there. <laughs> oh, the captain, he came running up on deck. Yeah. He was looking kind of pale around the neck. As he stood there shouting orders, I stood splashing in the waters and I asked exactly what you might expect. Ready? Where were you when the ship hit the sand? He said, I'll be out there praying for the land. You've got it, man. With my water wings held tightly in my hand. Where were you when the ship hit the sand? One more time. Where were you when the ship hit the sand? He said, I was out there praying for dry land. With my water wings held tightly in my hand. Where were you when the ship hit the sand? For my opening song. I got so many hits, I don't know which one to sing. Before I do, I must tell you that I'm dressing next door to the chorus girls. And the wall between our dressing room has a little, a little peephole. I had it plugged up. <laughs> then I unplugged it, let them enjoy themselves. It's too drafty. You know, I can't talk unless I smoke. Seeing me without a cigar is like seeing Phyllis Diller on the middle page of Playboy. <laughs> At my age, it's exciting. 
<laughs> My age, seeing a blank page is exciting. <laughs> Everybody wants to know what I smoke. I smoke a domestic cigar. It costs 25 cents. I love it. It fits my whole life. You know that Milton Burrow pays $2 for his cigars? If I pay $2 for a cigar, first I dance with it. <laughs> Close. <laughs> well, my opening song... Augusta J. Augusta J. McCann was a hempick married man. He has been fighting with his wife since married life began. Isn't that nice? I always open with a song. Well, Dean Martin opens with a song, and Robert Goulet opens with a song, Harry Belafonte, Judy Garland. All us great singers open the same. And we all have our own style. Dean Martin takes a few drinks while he's singing, and Robert Goulet always goes for those top notes, and Harry Belafonte opens a shirt down the air, and Judy sits on the floor and sings over the rainbow. <laughs> One night, I tried all their four styles at once. I took a few drinks, and I went for the high note, and I opened my shirt and sat on the floor, and what do you think happened? I hiccup, missed the top note, caught cold, and couldn't get up. Helping the woman across the street move in. She's marvelous. She's sophisticated. She's charming. She's lived in Paris and Rome. She speaks French. She's a member of the Jet Set. <laughs> oh, she's a member of the Jet Set. What's she doing in Burbank? Maybe the president froze her assets. <laughs> she can't find a better neighborhood to live in. Well, whoever she is, she sure made a hit with Kenny. Oh, that's true. I haven't seen Kenny look like that since he walked into the bathroom and found Aunt Agatha in the shower. <laughs> When we first met, how come you never looked at me like that? I never saw you in a shower. I'm worried. I'm very worried. It's not like Kenny to become enameled over another woman. <laughs> a mother that's enamored. Don't teach me English. Teach me French so I can go over there and tell that woman to let my Kenny alone. Mrs. Lane, it's probably not serious. Oh, yes. When you met your wife, did you help her move, huh? More times than you know. But she kept coming back. <laughs> Mother, this new woman across the street is probably very nice. Don't bother, Mrs. Lane. I'll get it. Hello. I'm Jeanette Nolan, your new neighbor. Oh, that's marvelous. What do you drink? Freddy. Uh, I mean, come in, come in. Thank you. Now, don't tell me. You must be Freddy. 
and you're Vicky, and you're Mr. Kapopoulos, and of course, you're Mrs. Lane. Kenny's told me all about you. He has. Well, why, why, why don't you sit down, please, Mrs. Nolan? Thank you. Sit someplace. I. Oh, no, not there. That's for company. <laughs> Is Mrs. Nolan? Yes. Didn't Kenny tell you I'm divorced? Oh, yeah? What do you drink? Freddy! Yes, I am. Oh, that's very interesting, isn't it? Mrs. Nolan, I don't mean to impose. Oh, impose, impose. (laughs) I, I... I, 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 I was just giving a little housewarming tonight, and I thought maybe I could come by here and borrow a little ice. Oh, I'll get it for you. What should I put it in? <laughs> you insist you can put it in a scotch and soda. I'll get the scotch. I know where she keeps the good stuff. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I saw her first. I'll get the lady a drink. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Adorable. And you're Kenny. He's so sweet. Helping me move in and all. Uh, but um, you know, the odd coincidence is that Kenny was the name of my second husband. Oh, you had two husbands. No, 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 no. Six. <laughs> uh, the Colonel, Ken. Georges Jacques and Claude. That's only five. You left out one. Now, I married the colonel twice. I'd forgotten I married him the first time. <laughs> you must have a drip dry wedding gown with yours. <laughs> no, no, Mrs. Lane. At my first two weddings, I wore a very simple, lovely, white bridal gown. At my third, I wore a suit, and after that, it was just, come as you are. (laughs) You know, Mrs. Nolan, there's something I think you ought to know. Uh, You see, uh, Freddie and I plan to be married very soon. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, it won't be a fancy wedding. Uh, With Freddie, I just want something simple. Well, with Freddie, I think you've got it. (laughs) You know, Mrs. Nolan, uh, this is a family neighborhood, and you being a member of the Jet Set, I think you'll find it very dull here. You'll be the only home wrecker around. (laughs) Mrs. Lane, I... I do think there's something you really ought to know. Here we are. You see, I... Pl- a nice, cool drink for the lady. Well, thank you so much. Here's a better cool drink thank for you. the lady. <laughs> oh, this is ever so nice. But with all these drinks, where in the world am I going to put them? Oh, have I got a spot picked out? <laughs> Well, then you're very lucky. I just saw some in the refrigerator. Help yourself. Oh, now, come on, fellas. I hate to drink alone, so oh, why doesn't... Great. <laughs> we'll join you to our terrific new neighbor. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. I think it's really better be getting off. But uh, if you haven't forgotten, would it be at all possible if I could borrow the ice? Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get the ice. 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 For the sake of peace and harmony, why don't we all get it? (laughs) Mother, I've never seen them act like this before. Well, they're like two tomcats on the prowl. Worse. A tomcat is like an old suit. At least it can be altered. <laughs> Boy, do I ever know her type. You know, she's going to make a play for every man in the neighborhood. 
Now, the only chance we have of saving them is to find her another man. But, Vicky, where are we going to find a man who drinks like she does, who plays around like she does? Where are we going to find a man that depraved? <laughs> There's a woman in my kitchen. She's just like you are. Then I can tell you right now, she's got all the wrong parts. <laughs> no, Mr. Warren, you don't understand. You see, we have a loose woman in our kitchen. Good, I'll take her out tonight and get her tight. <laughs> want you to do. The woman in the kitchen, she's new in the neighborhood, and to put it delicately, she's a barracuda. <laughs> number one, she drinks. Number two, she swings. And number three, she's a homewrecker. I'll take number two. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop making jokes. If you just put on the charm, you'll take uh, all her attention from the other. She'll concentrate on you. Oh, you want me to be suave? If you don't, we'll lose Freddy, we'll lose Mr. Kapopoulos, we'll even lose Kenny. Yeah, you sure got three great losers there. You? <laughs> you will, Dad. That's wonderful. I knew I could depend on you to be rotten. <laughs> Everything. Everything, Mrs. Lane, and especially the ice. Where is Mr. Kapopoulos and Freddy? Well, they're in the kitchen. They're making some more ice. Oh, what's taking them so long? I think Mr. Kapopoulos is looking up the recipe. <laughs> well, I suppose you three want to be alone. I'll just go see what's keeping the fellas. Does this one talk, or is he a stand-in? No, Mrs. Nolan, this is the irresistible Dean Martin. Oh, I wouldn't say I was irresistible. Well, then don't. <laughs> well, lovely lady, maybe you saw me in the airport. No, I doubt that. I never hang around the luggage rack. <laughs> People compare my romantic style to uh, Sinatra. Junior or senior? <laughs> Oops, I think this here is going to be a tough one. What would you say uh, to a little Japanese restaurant where we can have teriyaki, romaki, and sake? <laughs> oh, no, forget it. Those are my gardeners. Oh, my. <laughs> I know a nice little French restaurant where we can dine in a nice little booth. Good. We can eat and use the phone at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Martin. I really do think you are quite charming, but would you excuse me? I really must be yeah, getting home. Would you rather wait until a stool opens at the taco stand? <laughs> no, I at, least, at least let him walk you home with all those muggers and home wreckers. Uh, look, Mrs. Lane, that's the second time you've called me a home wrecker tonight. And I want you to know something. I'm getting married again. Who are you marrying? Who's number seven? The one man I've been seeing on and off all these years. Who's that? The clerk at the marriage license bureau. <laughs> Kenny didn't get involved with that woman. After six months, he would have been at her throat. Yeah, that's Kenny's problem. He would have been at her throat. He still doesn't know where the good stuff is. <laughs>
you off that Ponderosa and on my show. Well, I'll tell you, Dean, I've been wanting to do your show for a long time, but I hated to leave my boys. Yeah? Well, you know how tough it is to get babysitters. It's tough to get, it's tough to get the thing I like, I tell you that. <laughs> well, you don't want to face the group here, huh? He's <laughs> a good horse. It's see. funny he faced the group when Wayne Newton was riding him. Well, he thinks I'm his brother Fig. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, tell me about yourself. No, really, Dean. Uh, right, right. <laughs> it's the way he likes to work. <laughs> what track is he running at tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> but he's got to lose. <laughs> No, really, a ranch is a great place to raise kids. You know, you'd be very happy you and your family in a place like the Ponderosa. Yeah? Well, you could have some cattle, a few horses, you know. Oh, I love horses. As a matter of fact, uh, I keep a little pint in the... St That's Pinto. Pinto, not a pint. Pinto in the stable. Hey, Lauren, you seem to have such a great time on, on your show. I was just wondering, do you think I could be on Bonanza, you know? Huh? Dean, that, what a wonderful idea that is. You'd, you'd be a great guest star, really. I don't want to be a guest star. I want to be a son. You want to be a son? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Dean. Uh, what? I don't think we have room for a singing son. Are you kidding? Can you... <laughs> He's kidding. <laughs> Are you kidding, Lord? I'll be right with you. All right. Are you kidding? <laughs> Can you just imagine, you know, you come home from a hard day, you know, off the range, and there I am waiting, and instead of just saying, howdy, Pa, I sing to you. You know, I sing, how oh, I love the dear silver that shines in your hair. <laughs> oh, bless the dear daddy. <laughs> Don't fence me in 
I'll let me be by myself in the evening breeze. I'll listen to the murmur of the cottonwood trees. Send me off forever, but I ask you please. Don't fence me. Can we fence these in? I think so. There's little Joe and there's Puss. And they know who's the boss In this land where men are men He's seen this act Where seldom is heard Discouraging word If Bonanza stays in the top ten Oh, very not on the low ferry He loves it, dear. Let me roll along Yes, sir Singing on TV Can you imagine How on the TV we'd be <laughs> We could sing our hearts out He loves it I think he bit me <laughs> As a western to some we just can't fail And the record counters on the county trail We'll be twice as famous as Roy and Dave I'm Roy, yeah <laughs> Yip, yip, yip Yip, 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 yip With an old guitar and a mandolin Keep those cards the colors are coming in. Hey, if me I yo kai yip 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 me I yo kai at your boy. Yip me I yo kai. Here's a couple of shady characters who just robbed the bank and ran out of gas. Their luck ain't about to improve either, because they're going to find out you can get just about anything in a modern gas station, except what you came in for. Yeah, I'm glad you stopped pushing. Yeah, all right, good. I'll tell you what we do. We get some gas, we get out of here before the cops catch us. Move over. We'll move over. Where's the guy? Hey, guy, where are you? Little service here. Let's go. Welcome to the Jiffy service station. Finest gas station in the West. Well, you know our slogan. No matter how far you travel on, you'll never find a cleaner John. <laughs> Very good. Who wrote that? Henry Wadsworth, Texaco. <laughs> Listen, Mac, we're in a bit of a hurry. Could you fill it up? As yes, you sir. We believe in friendly service. I always like to get on a first name basis with my customers. Uh, what's your name? Clyde. Clyde? What a coincidence. Mine's Bonnie. <laughs> hey, you, Bonnie. Is there any fuzz around here? Only on chilly evenings when I wear a mangora sweater. <laughs> I'll just check under the hood. What's he doing now? Uh, you got a loose doohickey here. I hope he can't reach inside the car from there. <laughs> you found your trouble. You're out of gas. <laughs> Now listen, we got to make it to the state line, you understand? I want you to get us some gas and get it fast. 
And I'll tell you one thing, you're not going to make it without gas. <laughs> in case you're interested, there's a lot of bullet holes in your, in your car here. <laughs> By the way, we, uh, we specialize in body work. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you a secret. So do we. <laughs> Keep it oiled and you'll get many trigger happy hours out of it. Hey, bright boy. Come here. Listen to me now. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't get gas in this car right now, I'm going to take a pipe. I'll beat your brains right into your neck. You understand what I'm telling you? Now get me gas fast. You know, you're terribly attractive when you're angry. <laughs> Please, would you have a heart? Let me explain. We just robbed a bank. The cops are after us. If they catch us, I do 20 years. Now, I'm a family man. I got seven kids. I'm putting them through reform school. <laughs> Look, friend, I'd like to help you out, but I'm only here to sell gas. It's company policy. We gotta give you something. Okay, we'll take the trading stamps. Right, $1,000 worth of trading stamps. We had a lot of letters asking whether the lady who plays Ken Lane's mother on our show really is his mother. Well, to be perfectly honest, she's not. She's really his uncle. <laughs> but kidding aside, her name is Kay Medford. She's a wonderful lady. And truly a fine actress. We'd like to feature her now with my good friend, Zero Mostel, in a number that Zero introduced in his Broadway smash, Fiddler on the Roof. It's about two people who've been married a long time and finally get around to asking each other a very important question. Goldie, mm. I've decided to give permission to marry... For our daughter, Huddle. What? But he's poor. He's got nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's a good man, Goldie. I like him. What's more, Huddle likes him. She loves him. So what more can we do? It's a new world. A new world. Goldie. Do you love me? Do I what? <laughs> Do you love me? Do I love you? Well? With our daughters getting married, all the trouble in the Go lie down, maybe it's indigestion. Goldie, I'm asking you a question. What is it? Do you love me? You're a fool, you know that. I know. But do you love me? I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I. But my father and my mother said we'd learn to love each other. And now I'm asking Goldie. What do you love me? I'm your wife. I know. What do you love me? Do I love him? Let me 
Harry. For 25 years I've lived with him, fought with him, starved with him. 25 years my bed is his. If that's not love, what is? <laughs> I do And I suppose I love you too It, it doesn't does change a thing But even so After 25 years It's nice to Thank you. 